Was our mini fans? Carrying on from my transportation theme from the last vid, this time I'm making a cargo hauler to go with the armoured containers I previously made. Link to that video in the top right corner. As always, if you like anything in this video, feel free to like, comment and subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date. I have some links down in the description to some of my most used items, their Amazon affiliate links. So if you if you use these to buy anything, I get a small percentage back. Doesn't cost you anything. I also now have a Patreon up and running if anyone wants to support me a little bit more. Alrighty, enough of that. Let's get on to building. <laughs> I want this vehicle to have tracks, so that's where we're going to start. I have some leftover pieces from a piece of furniture, and these are going to be the base. So I start off here, I mark the bigger washers with a marker four times, and then glue rivets on, so again I'm using my fingernail beads, get them into place, and then dob a super glue, whack them into place. I don't actually end up using the smaller washers on screen. What I do next is make the back of the, the tracks. So I've made this, this shape on some card I and mean, I trace that out onto chipboard, two mil chipboard twice. So left and right sides and then cut those out. And then I glue all those wheel bits on with PVA glue. Now I've cut out two of these card shapes. So these are gonna cover the majority of the smaller wheels at the bottom of the tracks. Now I've riveted the ends of this and then to add a bit more detail on the front, I've got a piece of wire and some little sections of the, the ink refill from an old pen. So I've just cut off little sections, about five mil. I stuff the wire into those, glue it together and then glue this on to that card panel. And then off camera, I glue this on to the little wheels. I also chuck in a bit of chipboard behind just to strengthen it. This segment gets cut short because the doorbell goes. But what I've done is get some corrugated paper and cut it into centimeter strips, two strips. And this then gets wrapped around those wheels and glued on with super glue. After this is done, I glue those riveted washers onto the black wheels with super glue. Small note, I painted the inside of those black wheels underneath with black paint, just because it's going to be so hard to get to later on. Next up, I want a cover over the top and sort of back of the tracks. So I've done this twice. So I've just cut out the shape in chipboard with the front corner lopped off and the sort of rear corner lot off, two, two, two separate pieces. And then I've marked along this, I think it was about two centimeters. And then I just put on five mil little bits of card for an extra bit of detail. Just glue this on with PVA. Off camera, I've added a second piece of chipboard to the back of the tracks, just to give more of a surface for that top part we've just made to stick onto and that's what we do next. So I just glue it on with PVA and I use another bit of chipboard to make sure it's all straight, sort of pushing it against it. Sorry, I'm a little out of shot for some of this bit, but I've just mixed up a little bit of modeling putty and I smooth over some of the gaps and sort of uh, dodgy bits. Right, we're starting to move towards joining the two tracks together now. Now what I'm using here are the um, uh, mouth floss little stick things. So I've cut these down, three for either side. You can see the shape I've made and I, I sand them a little bit as well. And then I glue these on three each side or three for each track. Onto the cradle to hold the container. I've got two strips of chipboard, about three quarters of the length of the container, and I've lopped the corners off. So I've actually masking taped these to the container to make sure they're 
obviously in the correct position. Um, and I've got these two bracket pieces of, of chipboard that I've made and these get glued on with PVA. I, I didn't think this was quite strong enough so I add a couple of rectangles of chipboard either end of this cradle just to reinforce and I glue these on with, with PVA. To add a little more detail to this cradle, on the underside of those chipboard strips, I add a couple of sections of barbecue skewer to either side, just glued on with PVA. One last bit of detail for the cradle. I've got this, this food packaging container and I've cut out some of the sort of indented bits and I'm gluing these on to those rectangles we added to to reinforce the cradle. I'd like to think these are some kind of magnet or some kind of device like that. Time to glue the tracks together. I've got um, a length of chipboard, the same length as the, the toothpick things are on the sides of the tracks and I just glue those to this bit of chipboard, sort of wedging up the tracks to make them level with some chipboard, and I just glue this with super glue. To add a little more detail underneath, and also strengthen the joints, I add barbecue skewer sections between the toothpick things, and I just glue these on with super glue. time to attach the cradle to the tracks. I just glue this on with PVA. Last couple of bits of detail for the tracks. I add a couple more of the toothpick sections to the sort of back end where the cradle meets the tracks. I just glue these on with super glue. I mean, I add a couple more of those indented bits from the food container onto one of the track covers just with PVA. We're moving on to the cab of this vehicle now. I can't tell you exact measurements here because what I do is just make a template on a piece of card and then just trace it out onto chipboard. So I've cut out two sides sort of sloped uh, with the bottom as a diagonal and these then get glued to what will be the bottom, just a rectangular piece of chipboard and I use a flat sided box to make sure it's all straight. Off camera, I've added another rectangular chipboard as the kind of back wall to this part we've just made. And then I've had to glue two pieces of card to the outsides of where this part will join to the tracks because it wasn't quite wide enough. And then I go ahead and glue a bit of cable tie to the front. All right, so that part we've just finished is the kind of base to the cab. Now we're making the main body and you can see what I've done here. I've got a template cut out in card and I trace this onto chipboard and cut it out twice. Those two bits we've just made, I've cut out another couple of little notches, uh, the same on either, either side. And then I've cut some sections, so I've got a floor, a back, and roof, and the sort of front. And I start gluing some of this together now, again using a box to make sure it's all straight. I just glue on one side and the front for now. To add a little more detail below what will be a window, I add a bit of barbecue skewer, just glue it on with super glue and then trim it with, with wire cutters. 
for the side panel we haven't glued on yet, I now cut out another sort of rectangular chipboard, cut the corners off, and this is going to be a door eventually. And I found that you can kind of bevel the edges of chipboard. So I do this just with a, um, a nail, nail file thing. Um, and then I've just got some random sections of chipboard with some corners cut off and these get beveled as well. They're just going to get glued on as extra details. I then go ahead and glue those sort of extra panels we've just made onto the side already attached and the front section. I use PVA here because it's got some working time so if you don't get it quite straight you can you know move them around. Back to the door. I now glue the main section on to that side panel we haven't put on yet just using PVA. And then as sort of a hinge on top, I've got a section from a cotton wool bud. So that's glued on above. And then two sections of that pen refill we were using earlier on either end as sort of brackets. So these will just get glued on with that PVA. I now decided I wanted more detail on those sort of chipboard, bevel chipboard panels we've glued to the side. So what I've done is drill some holes with a pin vise and then I've just got some wire and I bend it into shape and stick it into those holes. And I glue this all with super glue and then rub some super glue along the wire so it doesn't bend. For the panel on the front, I want to do something slightly different. So I've got this piece of card cut out into a, a shape and I've got a section cut out in the center. So this gets glued onto that panel, that front panel with PVA and then a small section of cable tie gets glued on into that section cut out in the card. I then just add some random, randomly cut pieces of card onto those chipboard panels Again, a little bit more detail. We're back to the door now. I want to add a bit more detail to the front. So I've got a piece of card, a rectangular card, just a bit smaller than the door itself. And I cut this into three pieces. And then the top and bottom sections, I cut the corners off. And then these just get glued on with PVA. Off camera, I added another tiny little rectangle of card onto the door and two little fingernail jewellery beads as buttons. And then I've mixed up some modelling putty and I do some kind of joining bits for the door onto the, the cotton wool bud thing. And then some, you can see, uh, some little bits to sort of attach those brackets onto the wall. And then I just add some detail with a sculpting tool. After the modelling putt is dried, I glue that door section onto the main sort of cab. For the windscreen, which is what we're going to do now, I'm just using some of that mesh, like sculptor's mesh, or just fine mesh. And what I've done is cut a piece of chipboard the same width as the inside of the cab, and then I bend a piece of that mesh around that and glue it in with super glue. Off camera I've painted the inside all black because I'm not putting any details in there and obviously you couldn't get to it later. And then I go ahead and glue on the two roof sections and the sort of front top panel and then underneath that another section of barbecue skewer. Just all using super glue. For the floor outside the door, 
I've just cut three little rectangles of card and these get glued on with PVA. And after this, apparently I didn't press record on the camera. So what I've done is got another couple of those toothpicks, cut out a section and used them as sort of rails either side of the door and just glued it on with super glue. Now we're getting there. What we're doing now is sort of cabling from the cab to a kind of motor thing and then back to the tracks. So I've got this white piece that's from a soap dispenser and I'm going to run some cables from there up to the cab. So we do this here. I've got two pieces of bevel chipboard glued together. The two cables get glued to that and then that gets glued to the back of the cab. Alrighty, what we do now, we've got the little clicky bits off two cable ties with the sort of inside bit cut out. These get glued to the insides of the tracks, either side. This is where the cables are going to go in. And then I stuff two longer bits of cable into that white thing, glue them in. Stuff the cables from the cab into the end of that white thing, glue them in. Glue that white thing to the back of the cab. And then trim and cut those cables and glue them onto the tracks. I also now glue that whole cab section to the track section. I decided the whole cab section is a bit too high so I need to make at least some kind of ladder on the side although this is a very small ladder. I've just got a kind of square of chipboard which I've beveled again drilled holes in and then used some of that wire and bent it into place as rungs and then just glued it with super glue. And then this gets glued onto the side of the cab. As a final touch, I want to make a searchlight on top. And again, I use one of the, the clicky bits from a cable tie with the end cut out, bit of chipboard stuffed in there and glued in and then this is glued to a, a small rectangular chipboard base and then I just wanted to bulk it out a bit so I use just sections of barbecue skewer to sort of build it up at the back. And I'm actually doing two of these but in the end I only use one and then I cover this in, in modeling putty and smooth it all down and make a little sort of bulb at the front. And I sort of fiddle around quite a lot with, with sculpting tools and then sand it down afterwards. Once the modelling putty is dry, I drill a hole in the back of the searchlight with my pin vise and then a hole in the roof of the cab and I glue in a piece of wire and glue the searchlight on top and that's the build complete. So I Mod Podge everything now and then spray prime it black. Painting time. We start off by giving the whole thing a heavy dry brush of silver. Then we go back over the tracks with black. Off cam, I've gone over some bits with a flesh tone. I wait for that to dry, then I've gone over with yellow. And I've kept this kind of scratchy, not going up to all the edges because I want it to look like chip paint. Next up, we do all the cables, the panels on the door, and the searchlight bulb a light blue. After all this is dried, I come back in with a dark silver and just do some sort of scratchy bits around some of the edges, especially on panels. Back to the light, 
I do a kind of light blue highlight of a top sort of section and then dark blue in the bottom. I now do a very light dry brush of grey on the tracks. I want something a bit more on the roof of a cab, so I've masked off a line and I sponge on white as a white stripe. Washing time. I come in with my black wash, which again is black paint, water, drop of dish soap, and I slather this on some of the metal parts and then the blue bits and then dab it off with a tissue off the blue bits. Then I come in with a homemade brown wash and wash all the yellow parts, dabbing some off with tissue again. Some small bits of rust, so I sponge on burnt umber on some of the metal and then sponge on a little on some of the yellow, yellow sections to sort of show dirt or, or wear and tear. After that's dried, I sponge on a bit of orange over the rust patches. I want to do some stains now, so I come back in with my brown wash go around the rust bits and then various stains in various locations. Final part, I just use some black paint and do some kind of oily stains coming down from various places. And that's the project complete. Here's some photos of the finished piece. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one. Cheers for now.